Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar Mr. B. I'm Mr. B and today we have this 2008 Volkswagen Jetta 2.5 inline five cylinder with the automatic transmission. It's pretty, a, uh, pretty much a base model vehicle and uh, it belongs to a friend of mine and he brought it in and said that uh, he's having a couple of issues with it. So I checked it out and found out it's got a very common problem that's, that's going on with it and the vacuum pump on this car has failed. So this car has an external manually operated, mechanically operated vacuum pump that's bolted to the back of the cylinder head, uh, kind of right near the battery in this area there. And um, what happens with this is the seals in the vacuum pump go bad and it can cause a couple of issues. Uh, mainly what people will, will experience with this are oil leaks and this, uh, the, the seals where this go can leak engine oil down kind of in between the engine and transmission. And this can be improbably diagnosed as a rear main seal leak. So uh, we get a lot of people that, you know, hey, I just put a rear main seal in and my car is still leaking and find that it's actually a vacuum pump. Uh, this can also cause a hard brake pedal, which this vehicle has both of those conditions. The brake pedal is very hard. It's not generating enough vacuum at the vacuum pump because of these leaky seals. And also we have a pretty bad oil leak that's coming down in between the engine and transmission and soaking the front part of the engine and transmission. So that's telltale signs of a failed vacuum pump. So uh, if you go to the shop and get this quoted and they go by any labor guide, even Volkswagen's labor guide, uh, you're gonna get quoted probably six, seven, eight hours of labor to do this because the labor guide and all the instructions, service manual, everything is going to tell you to take the transmission out to replace this part. However, there are tricks around this. And when these, fir these first came out, they automatically, even under warranty, started developing these issues. And we quickly found a way around having to pull the transmission out to replace this pump. And the reason why they say to pull the transmission is there's not enough clearance to pull this out without running into the shaft for the shifter on the automatic transmission. So <laughs> we can actually disassemble this pump inside the engine bay and kind of roll it out over this uh, shift uh, lever that sticks up out of the transmission, that, the shaft. And we can pull this out, rebuild it, kind of roll it back in, put the seals back in on the outside and everything will be good to go. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today on this episode of Auto Scholar with Mr. B. Okay, so what I've already done is I've taken the engine cover off, I've taken the snorkel off. Remember you have two pipes down here you need to take off, those just come undone. Of course, unclip your mass airflow meter and your temperature sender right here for your ambient temperature sensor. I've also taken out the battery and the battery tray. Battery comes off, you got a 13 millimeter here, you have some tins holding these battery cables on, you have a tin here, here, and over here underneath the fuse box. All this will roll out and give you all the room in the world and you can kind of see already um, the oil buildup and everything that's that's coming from this vacuum pump. Now, the vacuum pump is located right here, and this is what we're going to remove. Now we have to deal with this right here, which is the selector switch for your transmission. So. Um, let me uh, grab the camera here and I'll show you a little bit deeper. So we're going to be taking off this selector switch. This is going to be our uh, transmission range switch. Also going to be taking off this cable right here and the bracket. Uh, this is going to pop out. It's just a little ball and socket here. We don't have to unplug this. We'll just roll this all over, but this needs to be marked um, where this is positioned because it can turn a little bit. And if it turns, it can throw a transmission code, but your, you see the, the hose right here, this is running to the vacuum pump, which is underneath there. And this is going to be one of these videos that's kind of hard to see, but so just kind of showing you where we're at here. Okay. So what I use to pop off this is just one of these upholstery tools and just kind of rock it out. And it's just a ball and socket down there. And then we have our 
12 millimeters right here. You don't have to take this off. I like to just to get it out of the way. Move this over here. We'll tuck it behind one of these cables here. You have a 12 millimeter down here. It goes on the shaft of this. And then you have two tens right here. Now, like I said, you need to mark these. So we'll put some, I'll get a chisel or something, put some marks where the, the middle is this supposed to be. Here that, if it's clean enough, you can use, uh, you know, touch up paint or something like that to get in there. You have a 12 millimeter that goes on top of the shaft. Right there. And there's a little washer in between the lever and the nut. And then on this, kind of wiggle it a little bit. It's actually notched to where it can only go on, on there one way. And get that out of the way and there is a bigger nut down here i don't know what size this is but it has a safety catch to keep it from coming loose and it has these little fingers on it that are bent and you'll just take you a flathead screwdriver and bend those down something kind of thin to get in there That's going to keep everything from vibrating loose. It's kind of hard to see down there. And this will come off with your hand. This nut right here will come off with your hand and you will have that safety catch there and this is splined it will go on the shaft only one way just remember how all this came out now let me get something i'm gonna mark these that way we can uh put these exactly back where they're supposed to go Okay, we've got the bolts marked, we've got them out. Now we just have to take this off. You gotta be real careful. The inside of this thing's plastic, so you don't wanna get too violent with it. And you can keep it plugged up. Just kind of rock it back and forth. And it will wiggle off. Now, when you take this off, you don't wanna move the, the interior of that. The inside of that because that's lined up perfectly you're wanting to just get this out of the way put it over here and then we have a little bit more access and you can start seeing where this pump is pumps right here now we need to go ahead and get these bolts off there i believe t25s if i can remember correctly Pretty long bolt, so it'll take a little bit to get out. Probably gonna fast forward past this part. Okay, now we're gonna take this front cover off. And oil just poured out of here. So yeah, oil's not supposed to uh, be in there. So 
So when you're in there, you're going to see there's a little phenolic plastic piece in here. And sometimes you can get it right out, sometimes you can't. This, the shaft's actually in the way. So we're not going to worry about it right now. We'll get it when we roll this out. But now we get to get the mounting bolts out and the brake hose off. So you have a brake hose going here. It just pops off, but it has a rubber piece. And as you can see, this rubber piece has actually stayed on this vacuum pump. You need to make sure that that rubber piece gets put back up in there. So now we got to get the mounting bolts for this. This hose just, uh, you can see this hose has seen better days. We're going to have to get another hose for this too. It's got a crack right there. So we're going to have to fix that. So now we got to get to the mounting bolts for this. Okay, now we have to go chase the bolts. And we have a T30. Here. Gotta be careful with these. Very easy to lose these bolts. And I suggest just working with your hands. No need for power tools. Just a few little bolts here. Be sure to keep all these bolts separate. You have a uh, 10 millimeter right here that keeps a wiring loom together on the pump. I'm gonna go ahead and take that loose. Sorry if my hands are in the way, guys. This is just not a very easy thing to shoot here. And you kind of have to feel around for the rest of these bolts. The one right there is probably the hardest one I'm going to go after. It's right underneath here. You have to get a fairly long extension, kind of guide it in with your finger. I need a little bit longer extension here. Let's double this one up. Feed them in like a. This one sucks. There we go. On there now, I ain't got enough room to get it loose because this negative cable's in the way. Bend it down a little bit. 99% of the time you're going to drop this. So you may want to get you a magnet handy. If you don't have one, it's flat out going to happen. Let's see how good I am. It doesn't help that my hands are pretty much caked with oil at this point. see maybe got it okay Whew. that was a tough one it's up here then you kind of kind of feel around for the other bolts keep this on
they're not on there that tight. Well, most of them aren't. That one was on there pretty good. All right, so now what we're going to do kind of hose right here is going to kind of get in the way of pulling this off. Might have to bend it a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull this and we're going to roll this over the shaft, okay? And pull this. This is your little phenolic thing in here. Go ahead and put this out of the way as if it was actually hanging it up. As we roll this over, we can pull this out. Okay, so pumps out of the car. We have, this is our pump blade. This just goes in here. And as the pump circulates, that's how this builds vacuum. Okay. And take that out. It just comes out. There's nothing to hold this in. But we have a gasket right here. It's a rubber gasket. We also have an O-ring that is set in here. And you take a screwdriver and you pry these little things down. Excuse me, they're right here. These down. And that is going to give you access to pull this off. There'll be an O-ring back here. And we have our main gasket. This is actually what normally goes bad it goes back here and this is what causes most of the problems but we can rebuild these you can get these rebuild kits here amazon less than 20 bucks at, i think i paid 17 and some change for this and this has all the gaskets you need to rebuild this pump however if the pump isn't you know if it's damaged something like that you need to put another pump on all you have to do for the new pump is just take the, the cover off and roll the new pump in, just like we're gonna do on this one. So I'm gonna throw this in a parts washer and go ahead and assemble it, make sure it's okay, and we'll get ready for reinstalling it. Okay, so I got everything pretty much cleaned up. Um, I'm gonna disassemble this real quick. Just try to get this out. Sometimes it can be a pain in the butt. You don't want to break this because they don't make this part. There we go. Take this out. This has got a little o-ring on it right here and we will replace it with the o-ring in the kit and then this o-ring is going to go right here. See how brittle this is. Make sure there's no residue or anything in there. I think the bag these come in is uh, probably stronger than the actual gasket itself. So 
this gasket, it's pretty much the same on both sides. And you're just going to just gently push it into the groove, following the contour of the pump. Don't want to stretch it out when you're putting it in. There we go. You want to be careful that it's all even. And then we'll place this O-ring right here. on this nozzle for the hose and then we'll just click that back in there just like that and we'll take our gasket right here just make sure it matches the the old one and we're pretty much ready for installation we're going to keep this out till we get over to the car biggest thing we have to remember is this is splined so it's going to fit to that engine only this way or that way, depending on how you put it in. Have to remember to clean off your cover, make sure it's still good to go. It's nothing crazy on it. And we're ready to reinstall. Okay, so we got all our parts cleaned up, got the pump rebuilt. So, you have this gasket right here that you have to keep still while you're doing this. It's kind of the hardest part of the job is to roll this back in and not have this gasket move around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this over this shaft here. And then all you do is just kind of drop it and it rolls right in. But you have to make sure that that gasket lines up with the holes. And so it's more of a feel thing. And when you roll this in, you may have to change the position of the rotor itself to fit into the hole where it goes into the engine. And it's probably the most aggravating part of the job to make sure that everything lines up properly. The only other way to do this is to pull the transmission out, which no one likes. Make sure the gasket didn't slip any. And there you go. Now all we have to do is bolt it back up and then we'll put our cover on the outside then we just put it back together you also want to clean this area up you know after you put the pump on you don't want to do it while you have the pump out you want to cover everything up and just wash this this area down to get all this old oil and everything out and be careful with these bolts putting them back in uh they are very slippery and will fall so uh just be careful with that of course you're probably going to need a magnet before this is all over Okay, everybody, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this car back together now. We're just gonna put the battery tray and the battery and the air intake and the engine cover and everything back on and give it a spin. Don't forget to also make sure that you put the hose going from the pump to the booster on and make sure it's leak-free as well. Also, patience is a virtue with this job. So make sure that when you're putting that pump, you're rolling everything back in. You don't forget to put the, uh, the, the little blade in there, that phenolic blade. I've done that before, I forgot to put the blade in. Um, also make sure when you're tightening things up, everything's fitting flush against the, the engine. It's not cocked, it's not sideways, anything like that. That's going to cause a lot of problems. And make sure that the rotor is flush on the inside of the pump before you put the cover on. If anything in there is not correct, it is going to cause a serious problem. So make sure, take your time, okay? 
All right, so that's it for Auto Scholar with Mr. B today. Remember to like the video and, of course, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.